So, hello everyone. Good news, folks. I am Latoya West Blackwood. I'm a director of the Book Industry Association of Jamaica, and I do many other things. Some of you might know me from different places, but everyone who knows me knows that I love reading. I always talk about the power of reading. And today, on this episode of Mobile Reasonings, we're talking about Education Week outreach between BIAJ and the Grassroots Community Foundation and how we're changing lives through the power of reading. <laughs> On cue. Welcome to another version of Mobile Reasoning. I am Charles Hyatt and I'm sitting here with Latoya West Blackwood from the Book Industry Association of Jamaica. This mobile reasoning is about reading mm -hmm. and what reading does for a nation. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna focus mostly on our children. Yeah. Latoya, welcome to Mobile Reasoning. Thank you, it's, it's I like the innovative elementary program and mobile reasoning deep. Ah, like it, thank you very I much. I like it. Thank you. Now, let's just get right, right into it. Mm -hmm. How does reading impact the nation? Hmm. So as I would say, in the beginning, there was the word. Oh. And um, I will start from a personal point, uh, speaking about my first memory as it relates to reading. Um, being a five-year-old um, student of West Indies Basic School on South Camp Road, grew up right across the road from Sabina Park. and. Um, I just remember distinctly getting books as gifts and having a positive relationship with that. And while my mother wasn't um, one of those parents who had the time, uh, the luxury of time to like, you know, every bedtime she would read to me or so on because she was a police officer, um, young woman and trying to make her way. But she, she, she gave this positive feeling as it relates to books and learning and knowledge and how I would see her use that to uplift herself. And for me, it just came naturally because of that. Now that I'm able to reflect um, as a child, clearly, you know, it, it, you know I was look at, looking at it that way. But now I'm able to appreciate that that's what, um, that, that's how it, it came into me. And... Uh, over the years, I, I would have, you know, read stories and at different stages, different things happen. So reading as that five-year-old who came from humble background, um, I never traveled until I was a teenager. I started traveling through the pages of books, right? So my, my imagination was very active. I grew up in a fruited yard. Um, so I would be up in the mango tree, you know, just creating my own worlds along with my then neighbor Carmelita. So we would eat our dinner at the fence together and talk about all different kind of things. But then I realized that in terms of when I got to the stage where I had a better understanding of stories beyond that magical quality that some of us who read understand, um, I started to question why, you know, with Babysitter's Club, none of the environment that they described fits like what my household was looking like. Mm -hmm. um, when you would read Nancy Drew, the mystery was there, the, the storyline was there, but then you couldn't relate to the characters. None of them necessarily the way they described or really look, they look like you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so there was a point when I became conscious of that. But not necessarily in a way that I was like like our teen activist who is coming to Jamaica this week, Marley Dias, who, you know, she build on that to not only re recognize it, but to say, me no want this. Mm -hmm. I want to create an alternative or find um, these diverse books that are going to be representative. Now, Marley... Um became popular mm -hmm. with her initiative to get 10,000 books. 1,000 black girl books, that's where it started books, out. Right. Mm -hmm. And so uh, now it has grown I think she has donated over 17,000 books 
across the world. I mean, as it, far away as Ghana. Right, and so it is. It is. It begs to the question of how impactful is it mm -hmm. when you see yourself in the story? It's powerful. It's powerful. I mean, people don't make the connection. I think the age that we're in now, where everybody's talking about digital and technology and whatever, they don't understand that some of these same people who are creating platforms that could be countries, they are inspired by books. Mm. The ideas that you see some of them executing are coming from things that they have read mm -hmm. as maybe science fiction, as whatever, and they have now made it their life's work and mission to, to move that away from just their mind or ideas to, to actual projects. Mm -hmm. So it is very powerful and, and that's why I would say that, you know, a lot of people might say, oh, you know, it depends on this bugger black black thing. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm fine with that. But you should be. I am fine with being a Pan-Africanist because I understand that identifying as a Pan-African doesn't mean I reject um, other cultures or other people. It means that I'm proud of who I am, what I, I came from, even if some of it is painful, and what I can become, right? And, and so I don't divorce my work in terms of publishing, for example, from Pan-Africanism. I'm very f from, you know, upfront about it because mm -hmm. representation is very important. And I think particularly at a time like now when we, I, I don't want to say have been because we're still going through a pandemic mm -hmm. um, and there, there has been a greater level of isolation that maybe the individualism that has been creeping into our society that break down some of the community and so on. I think it's even more important now um, for this generation of children you have students who haven't gotten that social part um, through school or whatever over the past two years. I think it's even more important now in terms of introducing them to certain works and ideas and stories. So now, based on that no, introduction, um, you have coming up, the 2nd to the 6th is con considered That's Education, education Week. week. Mm -hmm. And um, like you said, Marley's coming down. Mm -hmm. And her mother, um, yeah. Dr. Johnson, yeah. is also coming down. She has the grassroots community. Community Foundation. And mm -hmm. her whole thing is, look, we have to touch everybody. We have to find a way to touch everybody in some kind of way. So she, she Dr. Johnson, there's a Janice to me, is such a powerful woman, right? So coming, she's originally from St. Mary, Retreat St. Mary, and she has such a powerful story, like even we're reflecting on it this weekend um, as she arrived into the island with the first set of books that we're going to be donating to schools, and just looking at, at the circumstance in rural community, some amount of challenging con um, conditions existing, and emerging out of that now, to have a generation where her daughter has just announced that she chose Harvard, not that Harvard chose her, mm. right? Mm -hmm. um, it's a powerful story about how education, it, not just in the way that we kind of talk about education is the key to whatever, but in a real way, um, the way you apply knowledge, the way you use knowledge to uplift others really is the key to social ad advancement and to empowering ourselves in a real way. So I'm, I'm a big fan of hers and uh, she has a book, Parenting Like It Matters, that's based on real work she mm. has done in um, New Jersey and other places in the US where she has literally empowered families through their children right mm. demonstrate so, so they have a they have this thing they call super girls and super boys in terms of just a program that they have um community based and marley was a part of that right along with other children who are stars amina everybody and um i like people who can show proof of what they're saying mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. because in that work you can see somebody who has said this is w what I have right before the program has grown to where it is now she started out with an idea mm -hmm. an idea that 
we can liberate ourselves these are some of the tools that we have we don't know everything we're gonna learn at different points on the journey and so that to me is very powerful and i think that kind of work no i'm happy for the connection which started um in the kingston book festival in 2018 that's the first time i met marley and i met her mom and her dad scott and uh, you know just to make that connection and then her passion for jamaica talking to the diaspora element now and how she has committed particularly over the past two to three years um and she has been doing work before that but scaling it to say with an initiative like national education week where you have read across jamaica day which is not a book industry initiative we didn't mm -hmm. start it mm -hmm. um it exists as an organization from ever since but because of what we do naturally <laughs> we have to support that right. because without readers we don't have an industry mm -hmm. and so you know starting actually what we're doing now um coming up in this week started last year um during covid when we're saying boy you know we know all of the problems right mm -hmm. um even though laptops and tablets like dirt you know giving out in some spaces and we're not anti-technology we embrace technology and what it has but we understand in a very real way how our children learn mm -hmm. um what you know being out of face to face was doing for some children um the picture about learning loss the fact that even with the the education transformation committee's report that tells us that from the 2019 cohort of pep students 33 percent of them could not read right we know that we have a crisis before the pandemic and so we said to ourselves if this was happening before covid what will happen no mm -hmm. and we have to do something right and so we got on our phone and i mean she's just amazing because i talked to her one day next week i hear that instagram head <laughs> um dj nice mm -hmm. who was doing the club quarantine d nice, yeah. mm -hmm. d -Nice. Mm -hmm. um and a whole host of people were jumping on our instagram live to raise funds mm -hmm. right for this initiative and others and of course because of marley's activism and her work um it was it's not a hard sell for people to support and so literally in a matter of days <laughs> we were able to mobilize support to to gift 500 plus um students with literacy care packages that's what we called it everybody was giving other care packages mm -hmm. so we say make we give some literacy care packages and the thing is that um one of the two of two of the supporters mm -hmm. jet blue yeah which i mean it really has nothing to do with reading but i mean they, they get said it. they they get it they i mean they it. jumped on they get it because they're they're one of marley's um partners in terms of her travel right mm -hmm and it's just i mean i mean i haven't gotten a chance to meet them directly yet but i'm so grateful right like they they never said they never even tried to think it would tell them we have one million bags to carry them say all right make we break it up in a that's that and that's just amazing to me it, it is amazing because I mean, yes, they're they're airline industry, and um, they, somebody might say they have nothing to do with reading, but their passengers are children. Their passengers read. They know that JetBlue has a heart to, to understand the impact, mm -hmm. and they jumped in. They jumped I, right I think in. it was amazing to see that, and that the um, the education fund mm -hmm. also jumped in and said, "Look, this is worth it. Give some money towards." So it. Latoya Harris and her her team, they didn't National Education Trust didn't give us funds, but what they did was we understand their process in terms of bringing in because last year we just had to do something right mm -hmm. <laughs> we're just bringing in the books but this year we said well based on the fact that we're trying to reach more students we have to get more books mm -hmm. in so reached out to them and within a matter of minutes <laughs> they replied wow. very 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 efficient they they got back to us and they were like this is what you need to do this is what we do and the process was very clear um super easy and so that facilitated i mean you know you come to custom you still of have course, a, you have, still have some drama right but at least we had our documents mm -hmm. and we did everything the right way so 
to, to members of a diaspora audience who want to, I know sometimes we see people on the news saying, you know, <laughs> drama, 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 but um, our experience with NET was very positive. Um, and Marley will be making a special announcement um, on Thursday at an event that we're having, mm -hmm. um, which I hope you will be able to attend. Is that going to be in Kingston? Yes, it's going to be in Kingston. Excellent. Good. So I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, we actually have a special announcement to make. Marley is a Read Across um, America ambassador. Mm -hmm. um, you know that she also executive produced bookmarks on Netflix. On Netflix, Netflix yes. Right? Yes. And that girl is on fire. Right? I mean... So... You know, there's a special announcement to be made. Well, that's good. And I, and I hope good. you will. If if you if you <laughs> allow me, I'm going to dig it out of you. So I'm not going to talk about it anymore, right? I'm going to absolutely pull yes. it out of you, but I'm not going to do it. Yes. Um, no, I'll be there on Thursday. Um, and uh, I look forward to that. But mm -hmm. I, you know, what I'm what I'm loving, uh, for me, it's very simple. Mm -hmm. When you introduce reading is fun mm -hmm. to the children. And then you show them them mm -hmm. in the story, it changes the whole reality. Yeah. And it and and you know, when when we when I was growing up, I mean as a boy, mm -hmm. right? We weren't given books and all those things and or if as if, girl if, too. If, if if we were given a book, it was to study mm -hmm. or it was a comic book, right? Mm -hmm. And um there's so much more. You know, because yeah. boys, they say boys are creative. That's why we go outside and we play in a different And I get that games. from teachers, too, you know. When you're going to some other schools, the teachers will immediately tell you what, tell you what to give the boys mm -hmm. versus the girls. No disrespect to them because, okay, yeah, but honestly, we have a challenge, too, because some teachers are not reading mm -hmm. as much as they should. Mm -hmm. Some don't read at all. Mm -hmm. Those who do read, they don't have that kind of um, attitude they allow the students to explore. And if it's comic, you like, nothing wrong with that. If it's graphic novels, you like, nothing wrong with that. But we don't limit, um, we don't limit the stories to say, this is what is for you. We allow them to explore and to choose and to be introduced to different things. You, you use a very important word there, mm -hmm. and it's explore. Mm -hmm. The one thing that reading does is allow you to be an explorer. Yes. Right? The exploration in reading introduces you to to worlds and worlds and communities and cultures. Yeah. That you just because I mean there's a there's a there's a book about um, Dale and his mango tree. Mm -hmm. And there was a time when my son, we called him Mr. No, because he was no <laughs> to everything. He wouldn't share anything. Yeah. And we got that book for him. And he read it. And he read it and he read it. And he started to share with his brother. And we didn't say anything, anything. about it. You never gave him it, any instructions. No, it was the book that made the difference. Mm -hmm. And we sat back and we said, well, look at this thing. So we just start pouring in books, mm -hmm. you know? Because, and, and the thing is that, Yes, you have to be selective yes. with what they read, but mm -hmm. but don't try to guide them no. and make them go. Just give them exploration um, rules and keys. True. You know? Mm -hmm. Wow. That's true. Really good things. Um, I look forward to what is going to be happening this week. Yeah. Um, do you have a schedule of things that you're going to be... So, what we're doing right now, I mean, in terms of... Um, the activities were mainly coordinating with schools, right? Because mm -hmm. COVID still keeping. Mm -hmm. So we can't necessarily... I look forward to the day when our activities can be fully, you know, public again. For example, through Kingston Book Festival, which we hope to make a full return next year. Um, but for, for our activities, what we primarily do now is to... We have beneficiary schools who get bags anyway. We're at book bags, which... You know, this year we have on board Massey distributors um, who have given us stationery, wipes, all of those things to make sure that they still realize that pandemic um, not fully over, so we need to keep ourselves good and you have something to write. We'll have Charles Chocolates who will be doing some treats for the kids and they have a coloring book to go along with their Jungle Jam um, thing that they have. Um, we have JetBlue, as you know, we have another thing that, as I said, Thursday is that thing, <laughs> right? 
and we have so many i don't want to even start naming everybody and and losing track but so grateful we have had people volunteer we had mastercard um send some people to come and help to pack bags right um ue campus gave us a space to to pack the bags um so many people to thank and in terms of what we're doing, as I said, we reach out to specific schools to maybe go there and do some handover and some readings. Mm -hmm. That's definitely a part of it. And what we definitely try to do, Charles, is decentralize the impact. So not mm -hmm. everything pack up in town. Right. Right. So Janice and some other, I um, have to mention this before we, we wrap up. Everything that has been possible this year come out of people who we call ambassadors in the diaspora who have been on their own fundraising campaign so if one the first ambassador that came on board was kev rock um oh. <laughs> out of you know the u.s he's a jc old boy mm -hmm. um he was literally the first person who signed on for st thomas and we know st thomas sometimes tend to get left mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right and we have we have a host of people who came on board we acknowledge them through our social media pages so if you want to meet them you can go on there and check them out go to grassroots Fo community foundation page but those people um naturalists all of these people they, they use clubhouse they use those who are in media like yourself there they keep plugging it sending people to donate amazing mm -hmm. and if that small group that we work with is anything to go by i know that you know where the diaspora is concerned you just need to task them with a mission yeah. right 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 and and they just get it done mm -hmm. so for me i just reflect on what can be done from a individual level an army of one <laughs> and then you know, and that, that's what people don't realize. Sometimes when you have a conviction about something as an individual and you're really authentic um, and passionate, it almost, we, talk, we, we don't like the word infection now <laughs> <laughs> or contagious, but it literally has that effect on other people. Mm -hmm. You never know when you're doing things and you, I'm big on volunteering. I, I understand the, the power of volunteering um in enriching your life and creating real opportunities and it's through volunteering that i've met a lot of people who are now able to come on board and to to assist with something like this right so i think for young people too it's very important that they volunteer and understand that sometimes even if you don't we're not telling people that in you know harsh economic time you're going to take your whole day and do something that at the end of the day you're hungry, mm -hmm. right? But even in your little way, if it's 15 minutes, if it's an hour, and you know of an issue that's in your community or in the country, and you can spare that time toward being a part of the solution, do it. Yeah. So I would say that, you know, Jamaica is the land of Garvey. This year, we're all gearing up for 60th, um, years of independence celebration but for me the way forward for jamaica a more productive jamaica a more peaceful jamaica a jamaica where we're able to just unearth our total best self build on the things that we celebrate about ourselves now i think that reading has a huge part to play in unlocking that mission that purpose and so I ask all of you to consider what is your vision for literacy as a part of that celebration. The nice food, the dancing, all of that, it's all connected, but we're in a knowledge age and we can't get left behind. We have to empower our students. We have to build our communities. We have to, you know, enrich our country in a literal way through unlocking the power of reading. Reading is not something that's exclusive to bright people. It is something that literally makes the man and the woman. Building your mind, feeding your mind, can transform your life, it transforms mine. And so I'm inviting you to give yourself the gift of reading, give a child the gift of reading, and support 
organizations or people who are trying to spread the message, the magic of reading. Give them all your love and support. Hi, I'm Marley Dias, founder of 1000 Black Girl Books Campaign, executive producer of Netflix's Bookmarks, and ambassador for Read Across America. As you know, I love to read. I know the value and power of reading. I am so excited to be back in Jamaica for Read Across Jamaica Day on May 5th. I am honored to support the work that is being done by the Grassroots Community Foundation and the book industry of Jamaica. Jamaica is my family's home country, and investing in reading is my way of supporting this legacy of literacy and social justice. Please join me in supporting this work by going to www.grassrootscommunityfoundation.org. Let's help all children learn to read, read to learn, and love to read. Thank you. People, you have heard it yourself. You've watched it yourself. You've seen how powerful just the concept of reading is, and you've seen how much power mm -hmm. behind it that the BIAG and the Grassroots Community, Community Foundation, Foundation and all those other organizations are putting behind this thing. I mean, think about it. In a few minutes, in a few days, they got all the funding. Come on, really? <laughs> Raising the funds? That means that we, our community across the world is listening. Yes. And we're being active. Because I always tell you, knowledge by itself is not power. Amen. It is the application of knowledge that is power. And that's what BIAJ mm -hmm. and Marley, the Mar um, Marley Diaz, um, is doing. Mm -hmm. May 2nd to 6th, Education Week. Make sure you're being a part of it in some kind of way. Definitely. Natalia, thank you so much for meeting thank with us. Thank you, too. I hope you had a good reasoning with me, right? Definitely. More than good. Great. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Until such time, make sure you make somebody's heart smile. This is Mobile Reasoning. Thank you for checking us out on Good News Jamaica TV for content that informs, inspires, and transforms. Please like, share, leave a comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more positive Jamaica content. Walk good.